morning. It's good to be with you today. Today is Monday, September the, excuse me, Tuesday, September the 7th. Anytime there's a holiday, I, I, it messes my week up. So, hope you had a good Labor Day yesterday and had some rest and relaxation and maybe some time with the family. It was so good to be back with the body on Sunday morning and we had just a good service Sunday morning. Uh, the Lord really met us and it was good to be here uh, in worship again. Several things I want to ask you to be praying for. Uh, today, Vanessa Neely is having her first chemo uh, treatment for breast cancer, so be praying for her. Uh, Constantine is in Augusta, or he's on his way to Augusta today. Um, they're beginning the process of taking um, taking uh, the bone marrow from his brother for the transfusion. So be praying for Constantine and his brother and Leah and the whole family as they're continuing to face this, uh, going on nine, ten months now, this battle with cancer for Constantine. I want to ask you uh, to be praying for uh, our staff. Uh, we've just had, uh, every, every, just about every one of us have something happening in our families or in our household, that sickness, uh, what have you. Be praying for Jenny Hammonds as she continues to recover from the pneumonia as a result of COVID. Um, and so many, uh, just so many attacks and, and just stretched thin. And thank God that we are unified staff. Uh, but be praying for us nevertheless. Uh, pray for Mary Beth Deering. Uh, she's home now from the hospital. She had been uh, hospitalized with pneumonia. So be praying for her. Um, uh, Debbie Davis, Butch's wife, Debbie, is going to be having knee replacement on the 13th, I think it is. And then Sarah Lunsford is going to be having her hip surgery on September the 17th. And so, so many needs in the body uh, to be praying for, if you would. Uh, just want to start this morning with, with that old faithful, uh, faithful hymn and faithful song, Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit. that chord. 
yours again. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. I love that last sentence in verse 3. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. Filled with his goodness and lost in his love. Um, it's good to be loved by him. Amen. Especially when we know ourselves. <laughs> we know how wretched we are in and of ourselves. But to be saved by him and to be made the righteousness of God in Christ we would place our faith and trust in him. Boy, what a blessing. Today we're picking up and finishing the story of the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman where Jesus had gone. And you remember um, he had confronted her and her sin. And uh, as a result of that, um, there's an indication here that she placed her faith in Christ as a Messiah. And then as, as she's departing to go back into town to to tell those this miraculous thing that had happened and taken place in her life, how a man knew everything about her, and she begins to tell her story to others. Picking up in verse 27, it says, uh, Just then the disciples came back, and they were marveled that he was talking with a woman. But no one said, What do you seek, or why are you talking with her? Now, this is a cultural thing here. Uh, not only was she a Samaritan, who the Jews had nothing to do with, but she was a woman. <clears throat> and in that culture, it was um, women. Women were were just about as as low as a as a dog would have been in a culture. But one of the th remarkable things uh, that we see in the life of Jesus is that he broke cultural norms and held to the truth and followed and obeyed. Um, the father um, it didn't consider that she was a woman to be less than. And we see Jesus breaking a lot of the cultural norms of the day uh, to adhere to, to follow and display what God's heart was and God's will. Um, so here he is speaking to a woman and n none of the disciples said to him, what are you doing speaking to a woman? Although there's indication here that John, who was a disciple of Jesus, uh, would have marveled himself at why Jesus was speaking to this woman. Verse 28, So the woman left her water jar and went away into town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? And he here's what I want to pick up on. The woman immediately left and went into town and where people knew her and, and knew who she was and um, her practice in life, or her practices in life. And she said, come, and I want you to hear of a man, come and see this man um, who, who told me all there is about my life. The point here is, is that when she was touched by the Messiah, when she came into a relationship with Christ, and immediately there was a transformation that began to take place in her life. She was born again. I'm going to make that assumption by the text, that she was born again, and she went to tell her story to others. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you told your story? When was the last time that you, you were so filled with God's goodness and his mercy and his grace and and you and you reckon back on that time when he saved you and you told someone else that story i was thinking this morning as i was reading this passage how early on when i was born again when i just come to christ i wanted to tell everybody the story how christ had saved me especially those that knew me uh, before I was saved, because there was a transformation that began to take place in my life. And I really thought about it. And and while it's my desire every day, and, and I'm, I, I'm active in sharing my faith, 
sometimes I don't have that same sense that I did when I was first saved. And so I prayed this morning, God, rekindle in me that, that, uh, that uh, adjectives don't come to mind right now to be able to describe that. God, rekindle in me that newness and freshness of my salvation. Would you pray that today for yourself? Maybe you were saved two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 50 years ago even, that God would rekindle in you that sense of, 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 of God's favor, that sense of God's blessing, that sense of God's saving you, and ask God to give you an opportunity to share your story like this Samaritan woman did. Verse 30, they went out of the town and they were coming to him. So as a result of her testimony, come, I want you to see this man. I want you to hear this man. Could this be the Messiah? Um, come and hear him. So they begin to follow her and come into town. Verse 31, meanwhile, the disciples were urging him saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. If you remember in the story, the disciples had gone into town uh, to get some food, to bring it back to Jesus, where he stayed there at the well. And so now they're back, and they're urging him, probably because he was tired and had a long journey, urging him to go ahead and eat. Or maybe they felt bad that they were wanting to eat, and, and, and they didn't feel like they could eat without him eating. And so they're urging him, Jesus, eat. And Jesus says, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? And Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Now the point here that Jesus is making is that, that his first priority, his first priority in life was the kingdom of God. And that needs to be our first priority. Our first priority needs to be like Jesus willing to do what was necessary at the time in order to advance the kingdom of God. Uh, I think about that, not only food, but there's so many things that, that can get into our in our way every day of plans that we make, um, events that we plan to go to, circumstances, things we're looking forward to, whatever. And we will set aside the will of the Father in order to do the things that we want to do. I was thinking Saturday night, the Georgia Bulldogs played at 7.30, and I'm about to step on some toes here. I stayed up and watched the game. Uh, it was a good game. I'm glad they beat Clemson, yes. Uh, and, excuse me, not, uh, but Clemson. And uh, the, the game was over a little bit late. Uh, now, you might say, well, Jamie, you had to be there Sunday morning because you had to preach. And I wondered how many in our churches uh, decided to watch uh, uh, a college football game on Saturday night and knowing that they would be tired rather than to follow in obedience to come together to worship with the body. That's just one example of how often our, our, our pleasures get in the way of being obedient to the will of the Father. And so Jesus goes on to say, verse 35, I do not say that there are four months, then comes the harvest. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Now, this was a, a common saying because th the idea was that you don't want to go out and be impatient and reap the harvest, try to reap fruit or grain in the harvest when it's not ready yet. And so there was an intentional delay not to go out and to be patient. But Jesus says, look, he's making a kingdom principle here, speaking of the harvest, the harvest of souls. He says, don't put off for another time when it comes to reaping the harvest of souls. Um, the, the fields are white unto harvest. If we look around us today, the fields are white unto harvest. We could say during this COVID period of time that we just need to hunker down and, and wait for the right time. Listen, Jesus here says, look up, the fields are white unto harvest. Remember, 
the kingdom is the priority. The kingdom is the, the main priority the main thing that is to be the main thing in our lives. And he says, look up, the fields are white unto harvest. In other words, don't delay. And there have already been those that have gone out and labored in the field. Now the Father is sending you out to go and reap the harvest where you didn't labor any, but already they're ready to be reaped. See, there's a principle here. One sows the seed, one waters or cultivates the field, and then one harvests in the field. And so we may be on a daily basis either sowing a seed in somebody's heart, the seed of the gospel, telling our story to them, or we might be cultivating where someone else has already gone and, and uh, initially broken up the ground and sowed the seed in an individual's heart, and God's going to use us along the way to cultivate, to water, to, to nurse that, to continue that seed so that it might germinate, and then another comes along to reap the harvest. You see, that's why we pray every single morning at the close of our devotions. God, give me an opportunity to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart today. God, give me an opportunity that I might be uh, willing and intentional about cultivating a seed that's been planted. Or God, by your grace, uh, let me be a part of reaping the harvest where someone else has already labored. So then in verse 39, many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. And they said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. Now, here, here's a principle that I want to I want to make. You see, the initial drawing or the initial interest that was sparked in these other Samaritans was that they had heard the testimony of this woman. But then now they, they had begun to believe because of this woman's testimony. But now they themselves had met Jesus personally and they no longer believed because of what the woman said alone, but they believed because they heard his word words. Can I tell you that God will use your story. When you share your story with somebody else, how you came to know Christ and how he changed your life, God will use that to draw them. But faith comes by hearing and that of the word of God, Paul tells us in Romans. And so allow God to use you today to share your story today, tomorrow. Be intentional. Have your radar out. God, could this be the person that I can share my story with and pray that God will use that so that they might come to hear his words so that they might be born again. Listen, pray. Uh, we're going to start the series this coming Sunday, four weeks that we're, we're looking at sharing our story of evangelism, of sharing with others so that they might come to know Christ. Pray that God would work in your heart. Pray that God would work in my heart. Pray that God would work in the heart of our body so that God would renew us with a vision to see the lost saved. Uh, would you be praying along with me on this? For the next four weeks, we're going to be in that. It's not going to stop after four weeks. We're praying that, that God will begin uh, just a new work within our body that we could be excited by seeing others come to know Christ and to follow him. A couple of other last-minute reminders. I want to remind you that Donna Faust Funeral uh, Memorial Service is, is this coming Saturday, September the 11th, at 2 p.m. here at the church. Be praying for uh, for uh, for the whole family, for Jay, uh, for Morgan, for Shannon, and for little Ruby. Uh, also, Friday is uh, the funeral of uh, Jenny and David Hammond's brother-in-law who passed away last week. Uh, due to COVID, so be praying for them as well. Uh, I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you, that he keep you today. Pray and ask God for an opportunity to, to plant, to cultivate, or to harvest. Plant a seed of the gospel, cultivate that seed, or by God's grace, we'll be able to witness him save someone. I pray the Lord's blessings on you, keep you. I look forward to being with you tomorrow morning. Have a great day.